coming off of yesterday's failed uh, mission, which I made a video about, I am going to try again. I left all my stuff in the car, which I don't like to do. It's expensive stuff. I know a really good park that's up in the hills where there's really no noise at all. So it's a little far away. I'm going to take a little drive, text. I should be able to make phone contacts. Uh, let's see how that goes. I have a problem that uh, I've been keeping very bad logs. I can't read my handwriting when I get back, and I have to convert my time from local time to UTC time when I do my logs. So I'm going to start being more careful and write more clearly. I have my watch set to, it says GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. I'm going to have it set to that time, which is five hours ahead. It's nine o'clock here. That means it would be two o'clock, two, about two o'clock in uh, UTC time. So instead of writing down and having to convert later, I'm going to write everything down perfectly the first time. By the way, there's a Goodwill over there. I highly recommend going into Goodwill and just, and garage sales. Go into Goodwill and garage sales and look for um, supplementary ham radio items. You will never find ham, real ham radio stuff in a place like that. I mean, almost never. Uh, but you will find like bags and maybe some cordage and some wire, some excess wire that you can use to make antennas. You'll find stuff. I'm heading uh, southwest and I saw this little stop called Scenic View, so I thought I would get out and take a look. Um, the second I got out, there were mosquitoes coming into my car. They are, I'm wearing a pretty heavy jacket and it's pretty hot already just to keep the mosquitoes out. But there's the Scenic View, that's the Missouri River going, it kind of goes northwest, it flows that way area southwest of St. Louis called, it's Highway 94 and it kind of goes out into the Ozark Hills and there are actually wineries around here. There's a lot of wineries in Missouri. There's one right there. You see the umbrellas? A lot of people come out here and uh, sit and drink, you know, and overlook the wine. Kind of a wine country of Missouri. One reason why I don't like going to state parks, um, the park ranger. Um, so I'm gonna walk up this bluff here with my radio stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to unload as much as I can so I don't have to carry the weight. So I don't know if you can tell, it's a really steep hill here. I got about 25 pounds of gear here. I didn't know whether or not to bring the chameleon or not. Because, I said, as I said in my last video, I'd love to use it. I'm sure it's really good. But with a 60-foot counterpoise, it's pretty tough to set up. Whew, I'm already breathing hard. Um, 60 foot is a long, it's a long stretch to get up into a tree. It requires more effort than a, my, just a little random 20, my other 20 foot. A lot of people come up here in this bluff. By the way, there's like a 100, 150 foot drop after this bluff to the river. Some people come, come up here to climb. Some people have fallen, of course. Came up here once and some idiot was, some teenager was trying to show off. I saw him climbing the far side of the bluff and his friends were yelling at him, get down, get down. I was thinking, yeah. Um, I would do stuff like that when I was a teenager, thinking it was cool and whatever, you know, something to prove. I learned <laughs> there's nothing to prove. Well, there's nothing to prove when your life's at risk 
And what I'm saying is, there's nothing wrong with climbing. But that kid was just trying to show off. He had no gear, he had no training. He was just with his friends, you know. This bathroom is pretty nice for a park. I saw a kid climbing like he was right in that area. And by the way, it's like a 150 foot drop on that side. There's a big old power plant over there. It's basically using the river water to cool it down, I guess. The water kind of, you can kind of see how the water goes in and out of the power plant. Oh, I found the perfect place. Right there, let's take a look around first. Yeah, that's where people try to climb. Right down below this is the Katy Trail. It is a trail that used to be a rain, uh, train track. And it goes from St. Louis almost all the way to Kansas City and you can ride your bike on it. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna go over that branch right there. To be careful where it lands. I'm gonna land over there in the trash. Okay, it took me three tries, but that last one, I got it way up there. Probably 40 feet. I'm going to use my random wire and just uh, keep it simple. Uh, 40 feet. Um, now notice also that I've left a space because I am the only one up here. Guaranteed, someone will come up here and walk here. You wouldn't think so, but they will. See what I mean? That's me right there. That's my blood. Set up. Battery, 12 volt. Microphone, I just turned it on. Super quiet. Counterpoise that way. Here, there's, I, to be careful about the tension because it pulls, pulls on it. Um, just turn it on 40 meters. I'm gonna make a quick contact. See if I can. Look how good that's decoding. Well, it was. To this guy, do you hear how his his um. Morse is choppy. It's like da 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 da. It's not consistent. Da da. What is da da da? He's going. I think he's using the straight key, but he's going real fast and then real slow and real fast. It's really hard to decode guys like that. I know you want to use the straight key, but you got to be good at it. You got to be consistent because you can tell it. Like I said, it goes. Da, 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 they go fast and then slow and then fast and then slow and it's just not I can't copy it. I'm not gonna answer you.
CQ CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar, Portable in Missouri. CQ CQ CQ, N9YO, Portable in Missouri. CQ CQ, N9YO, Portable in Missouri. CQ CQ, hopefully that guy is still using it. Listen to how clear right. that is. I gotta get out of this chair. Um, as I said, it's I like listening to a telephone. I spent five days in the hospital uh, uh, as I uh, lungs filled up with blood clots and. Uh, See those guys there? They're actually really nice. Um, I walked by and he, he literally said, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I just laughed. I mean, there was no uh, introduction, no nothing. Anyway, I was nice to them. They were nice. I said, I said I was doing uh, ham radio and uh, you know, you can talk to the world sometimes if you're lucky and sometimes the next state. It's just you never know. But they were interested. It was real, they were real nice. You know, I don't mind informing people if they're not, if they're serious about learning or ask, ask genuine questions. I don't mind talking to people. Um, they asked me how I got it up in the tree and everything too. There's some more people coming. Um, I guess I'm a ham radio ambassador, right? <laughs> well, I don't mean to be. My radio's overheating. I think my radio's overheating and it's it stops trans it stops transmitting. It it reduces power or something. Okay, so my radio got really hot on this side. I guess I need a heat sink or something. And it just kind of just chopped out and stopped broadcasting. Um, it's, the sun is on it, but I'm a little concerned about this. Uh, why would it just quit like that? Maybe my battery's dying. 
what I did was I took the bean bag off the cordage over there, took it off, um, put it aside, and now I can just pull. If you fold this thing right, it will latch onto itself. If you fold it the wrong way, it won't. It won't. So sometimes I get lucky. Um, I haven't figured out how to get that right yet. All right, cannot forget my antenna. It's very easy to forget stuff, see? Especially if it's black. Here's my antenna now with um, banana plugs. Still need to add her some sort of strain relief so I can hook thinking um, something coming off of here that would hook here that way the strain would be on that part and not that part pull the radio off okay so um, here was the problems I'm a little bit worried about that KX2 it was overheating the right side well uh, to be fair it's really hot today and the Sun was on me I was the first time I wasn't in the shade um, I was boiling hot sweating because I had to wear that coat to keep the mosquitoes off of me. There's no breeze to blow them away. Um, so I'm a little concerned though still. The right side of the aircraft got really, really hot. And I was um, having a QSO with that guy and I'm gonna email him later. I was having a QSO and it was start, started cutting out. My keys just weren't transmitting, it would just stop. And he said, oh, sorry, QSB, QSB, um, sorry, bye, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to email him or try to email him and say, sorry, um, I had power, power problems. It's possible my battery's running low too. I haven't charged it in a while. Uh, other than that, the mosquitoes bugged me a lot. I'm not going to complain about that though to you again. Beautiful area. Oh, I was also going to say I really struggled. This is one of the biggest struggles I've ever may, had to make to make a QSO call called Q, uh, CQ over and over, both phone and CW. I called C CQ, CQ, nobody heard me. Whoa, there's a jet. Some kind of a fighter jet. Can't see him though. Isn't it cool up here? Missouri River is real interesting. Um, I live right near the confluence of Missouri and Mississippi. They kind of come together. Very muddy and very swift rivers. You never see, you hardly ever see boats out there. You see barges, but not boats. A few people came by. They were, I showed them to you. Um, I wish I would have recorded the conversation, but um, you know, they were nice and actually interested and they were kind of like, wow, that's interesting. And I said, they were asking me how I got the antenna into the tree and I told them I swing a bag up there and pull it up. They said, whoa, that's cool. And I also said I talked to sometimes Europe, sometimes nobody, sometimes Illinois. Um, by the way, I think that's that would be east. And my antenna was kind of pointing to the east. You know, I was thinking, just because you're up high, that's not necessarily good. Um, and you tell me, you could set up on the side of a bluff or something, and you might get some reflective properties, you know? It might be bouncing somewhere more. Or is it better to be in open space up high? I don't know, these are experiments. I think if you do things like this over and over and over and over, eventually, you just start to figure out, you know, oh, I do better if I do this or that. And not try to figure it out, it just kind of comes naturally.